Hey everyone, Kevin here from River City Graphics. Today we're going to be creating a distressed text effect in Photoshop. So, let's get started. Alright, so here in Photoshop, the first thing we're going to do is go up to File, New, and create a new document that is 800 pixels wide by 300 pixels tall. So that will give us a nice wide area to put in some fairly big text. So I'm just going to go down to my type tool and I'm just going to have Arial Black as my typeface and we can just type out the word distressed. Okay, so once we've done that, I'm just gonna take my regular move tool and transform this to make it larger. So once you get this text as large as you would like it, I'm just gonna leave it right here. Just click the check mark in order to apply those changes. So in order to really sell this distressed effect, um, you're probably going to wanna to have something in the background that's also distressed or kind of grungy. So what I'm going to do is go up to File and Place, and I'm going to pull in a grunge texture. I have Grunge 03. This is a texture from the uh, Riot Gear Pack by Video Copilot. Um, it comes with a bunch of textures. So if you want that, it's videocopilot.net, or you can just go to Google and grab some grunge textures from the images. So what I'm going to do first is just kind of up the contrast of this grunge texture. So I'm just going to take and put in an adjustment layer by clicking this half and half circle. Go up to curves, and then I'm just going to take and create a small S curve. So one point slightly above the line, one point slightly below the line, in order to just bump up contrast within that background. So you can see what it looks like before and after. Just a little bit of contrast to make it look a little bit cooler. So then I can hold Alt and Clipping Mask this Curves layer to the grungy background layer in order to apply it only to that layer. So once I'm done with that, I'm just going to go up to my text layer, grab my Type tool, select all my text, and then I'm just going to pick a different color, something that's um, a little bit more fitting with our background. So probably something like a darker brown, maybe even a little darker than that. It's probably good. Again, you can adjust this to your liking. So I'm just going to click the check mark, and now we're actually ready to start adding on our distressed pieces. Now, the way that we're going to do this, um, there's a couple of different ways I've seen this actually done. Um, a lot of them involve taking the text layer and putting on a layer mask and then actually painting on to the text layer like that. Now we are going to do that later, but I want to give you guys the option to actually take and change the color of the distressing that we're going to add. So in order to do that, we're going to actually make a separate layer first. So I'm going to click on new layer down here. And once I've done that, what I'm going to do is grab my brush tool. Now we're going to open up our brushes and I am using the default brushes. So just to prove that, I'm just going to open this up, go to reset brushes, click OK. So these are all the default brushes within Photoshop. Now. If you want a different effect than what we're actually creating today, um, I would recommend going and checking out some different grunge brushes online. There's a lot of free ones that you can download and install. I do have a tutorial on how to download and install brushes for Photoshop. So now that we have our shameless plug out of the way, I'm going to take and it's on the very bottom layer. It's number 100. Um, I, it might actually be different for you, but what we're looking for is this brush right here. Um, it looks kind of like confetti and it's on the bottom layer or bottom row. So once you have found that brush in your default brushes, what we're going to do is basically take and scale this up so that it's um, probably about twice the height of our text. So now what we can do is come over here and I'm just gonna go with white for the um, first part of this and I'm just gonna go take and have the opacity at 100. So now I can just take and click over our text and you can see that it starts to look like it's kind of flaking off, like we're losing pieces of of the text when we actually put that white there over the top of it. So it's starting to become very distressed. Um, now what you can see here is that we've kind of gotten outside of our text and the way that we can get um, this back on there so that we can kind of fix that issue is to take and just hold alt and take our layer and put it to the distressed text. So now it just clipping masks that. So we held alt and went in between these layers and it basically takes and clips it only to the letters. So um, this looks decent. Um, you can probably use some other brushes in order to get a little bit better of an effect. Um, but let's say that we wanted to take and change the color. Now the benefit of actually putting this on its own layer is so that we can take and change the color if we would like. So I'm just going to go to this layer, which I guess we can technically uh, name distressing or something like that so that we know what that is. Um, so on our distressing layer, we're going to take and we're going to add in a color overlay. Um, this is under the effects button. It's off screen, but I'm going down to color overlay. 
So now we have some terrible looking red on there, but what we can do is color pick this brown color and then pick something a little bit lighter, maybe a little more desaturated, um, just so that it kind of looks like if this color were to be worn off, um, that that's kind of what it would look like. So we're picking something a little bit closer so that it's not just white, um, that it's actually something along the lines of those. So when we actually zoom out to 100%, um, we obviously haven't made this light enough in order to see from a distance, so you can kind of look at it at 100% and also move this around in order to see that. So you can see it's looking a little bit more um, realistic in that fashion. So what we're going to do is take and also throw in a little bit of noise. So I'm going to take and create a new layer, and then I'm going to go up to, um, well first we need to fill this layer, because if you don't have anything on the layer, you can't add noise. So we're going to take, and I'll just put out black, so I'm just going to hold Alt-Delete with black as my foreground color. It's going to fill that entire thing with black. Then we can go to Filter, Noise, Add Noise, and now we want it to basically um, just have the amount at something higher so that there's plenty of noise in the background. Um, you don't want it to be a multicolored fiesta, so make sure and turn on monochromatic so that it's all black and white. And then I just have it on uniform under distribution. So I'm going to click OK. Then we'll set our blending mode on that layer to screen in order to remove all of the black. So now you want to zoom in. Again, make sure it's on screen. Um, and if you use your mouse wheel, it will scroll through those, which is what you just saw. So now I'm just going to zoom in, and we're going to just take and lower the opacity so that you can kind of get the essence that the text is a little bit worn, um, a little bit kind of rougher, um, it's because pretty text is what kind of kills this effect. Um, you want your text to be distressed, so it can't look like it's pristine and solid colored and everything like that. You're looking for something a little bit rougher, um, and it takes a little bit of time to actually develop that. So the next thing that we can do, um, you can kind of leave it like this. You can start putting in some stuff around the edges. But what I'm going to do is show you how you can actually pull in this background. Say if this text was actually printed onto um, a wall or something. Say it was spray painted on and it started to flake off um, off of the, like say that was paint and it started to flake off. So you'd actually see the background through the text. The way that we're going to do that is by taking and holding control and clicking on our distressing layer, the actual icon, and it's going to actually select all of the stuff on that layer. So then we can do um, go up to select inverse, and so that's going to select everything but those, and that's what we need to do in order to actually create a layer mask. So I'm going to go down to our actual text layer, click on layer mask down here, this little um, white circle in a square, and it's going to take and layer mask that. Now you won't see really any difference, um, but we can take and turn off our distressing layer, and now you can see that it's actually taking and pulling through the color of the background. So the first thing that I showed you, if you wanted the distressing layer, that's going to show you how to take and add in your own color if you wanted it to um, actually be a, a specific color rather than the color of the background. The second part that I'm showing you is the um, layer mask on here, which is showing you how to pull through the background by actually masking out the text. So once we've done that, um, we can take and start to actually um, fine tune this a little bit. We've kind of just gone over it in a little bit of a wider sense right now, um, just throwing in some different areas. But what we want to do is kind of get a smaller brush and go in here and just start taking and notching away at some of this stuff. You can see that we can really start to peel it away. Now this might not look too good because I'm kind of zoomed in right now. Um, we'll see once I zoom out. But you can kind of just come in here. You can really chunk away some of this. You might want to take and lower the opacity um, down and maybe take and knock out a piece, a few pieces of this because um, not every piece of this is going to be the same color because um, think about things that are worn like your jeans. Um, your jeans, if they're worn, um, not worn like you're wearing them, but worn like you've had them on for a while, um, they're going to be different colors in different spots. So you kind of want to take and try and apply that same idea here. Um, it's not going to be all this solid brown color. You're kind of going to have a little bit of worn area in here. And so you can start adding that by lowering the opacity. Um, but you're also going to want to have the 100% opacity and just kind of scrape away at the edges of your of some of your text. Now the rough um, edges really help to sell this because um, your text is really pristine and crisp when it comes right out of your type tool. So you want to kind of rough it up and ruin it a little bit. And you can see that it's really starting to kind of um, blend into the background a little bit more on this side and really sell the effect a little bit more. Now again, if you have other brushes like um, 
some grunge brushes that you can find just by searching grunge brushes on Google. Um, you might actually be able to get a little bit better effect, but just I'm just trying to show you that right out of Photoshop you can pull with the um, default brushes some pretty decent effects in a pinch. So you can just continue along here. I'm probably not going to do the whole thing, but you can see you can really just tear away. And if for some reason you really wanted to destroy a lot of the text, you can kind of come across here. Maybe we can do it by holding shift, but that would kind of be an exact amount and you kind of want to make it look like something's really ripped through that. You don't really have to do that, but that's just kind of an idea. You can really take this in a lot of different ways um, by changing opacities and doing all kinds of different things. So this should give you an idea of how to get started. Um, basically just kind of roughing up the edges of your text by using this layer mask, um, how to pull through the background, how to make your own color um, for the distressing, um, and how to find which brush to use. This is the best brush that I found out of the default brushes to use for this um, that gives you a really good flaking and distressed look. So I hope you guys learned something in this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and comment. I do have a new video tutorial coming out every week. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.